Okay. Coming back now. Hopefully you have begun to see that this is a deliberate parallelism. You have the parallelism of the text, the exact words being used, and of course you can't see that in English. You can only see it in the original. And what I had started to say before and have said on other contexts, this time I want you to pay really close attention to the parallelism of the syllable counts. Again, this is proving that the word order is deliberate. Okay, this, the people who copied this text, they had no idea of this stuff. Their copies are like columns, where they break a word in the middle if it exceeds the margin of the column. So they couldn't even read, or they did, but when they were copying, they weren't really reading the text. Okay, so they didn't know about what I'm telling you. Alright, so the distance between this Hold Apocrites and this occurrence here, which is World War One, the distance is 105. Way up here, the distance between this one, which is parallel, and this one is also 105. Between this one and the one marking World War one here that distance is seventeen hundred and or it is um I forget yeah you, you have to decide whether it's at the beginning or the ending of the word but if we say eighteen eighty four minus and then we come back up here and that's occurring at syllable 148. And y y the thing is, you just don't. You have to play with it a little bit to know if it's at the beginning of the word or the end of the word. Where the sevening is intended. 1884, let's say minus 148. So yeah, 1736. It, it's 1734. This is where the 1734 is. So, the this one. <coughs> Excuse me. 148 plus, it's really 1734, is 1882. Excuse me. So it's not that one. <coughs> Let's do it this way. 1884 is the end of the prior clause. This begins it. So we say 1884 minus. One seven three four. And that's at one fifty. All right, so it's the second syllable coming in, but just to, so that you see, one seven three four divided by seven. Oops, it's not seven three four. It must be one seven three six. I've done this so many times that I I get tongue tied about the. Le okay, so it's one seven three six. So if you take I'm not sure if it's wanting to use the beginning or the end, but 1884 is the prior benchmark before this starts, and sometimes that's how they do it. 1884 minus 1736. It's 148, so it's the very first syllable back here. Right here, see 147? So it's starting with the chi, it's treating the chi in there. Because it's an expression. Okay. So when you come back down here, it's the same thing. Now I want you to notice that, you know, this is five syllables long. And including the chi, that makes this one five syllables long right here. Okay. Chi apocrites, five syllables. Okay, starting at syllable 148 with chi. All right, so then for those five syllables, it remains divisible by seven. See, it was 1736 to here. And in this case, it's counting the whole prior apocrites and stopping here 
But even if it didn't stop, it would still be divisible by 7 because you're, you're increasing everybody plus 1. All right. So 1, 7, 3, 6 divided by 7 is 248. 1, 7, 3, 6 plus 148, which was the prior occurrence. That's 1884. That's our end mark here. So measuring from the start of the previous Apocrites and stopping just before the start of the new one is divisible by 7. But since it's counting all 5, then the next 5 syllables remain divisible by 7. Now I hope you understand. That means somebody, Matthew actually, is timing the words. The word order is intended to mark the year that is being, you know, signified by the text. And not only that, but there is a parallel being set here between this occurrence, which is World War I, and the prior occurrence, which is a different kind of war, it was a war that um, Marcus Aurelius was fighting with the Gentiles, with the Gauls. Okay? And as a result of it, he dies. There's some speculation that maybe he too died of the plague, but his brother did, Lucius Verus. His brother died of the plague. And the idea is that God is judging Rome for judging the Christians. Okay, so what do you think this is going to have to be here for World War One, it's going to have to be a judgment that's a response to something that happened before and what happened before oh the foolish virgins were saying to the smart ones they're all believers now okay see how believers determine history the foolish ones are saying to the, to the wise ones give us what you got because when you're learning and living on Bible it won't always be true, but for certain portions of your life it'll be true. God gives you a lot of prosperity. Because it's a kind of advertisement to the people around you. Hi, see this believer here learning and living on Bible? That's what I want you to do. And so a lot of people in history, you know, I mean, that was the example of Abraham. That was the example of Moses. That was the example of David. Your average dumb person is not interested in God, but they are interested in having a good life down here. So certain individual believers are selected to have prosperity as an advertisement because they're learning and living on Bible. And other believers, they don't have that prosperity because the prosperity is not always an indication that you're favored of God. But for certain individuals, it's given to them because that makes a good advertisement to the dummies who aren't interested in God, but boy, they're interested in a good life, so maybe they're going to start getting in the Bible. At least be saved. So that's what's going on here. But this is also the historical trend of the believers who are in learning Bible, are being prospered, <coughs> Versus the ones who aren't, and the ones who aren't, therefore, want to go to war with, take away from the ones who are learning. And that was a really big thing going on during this time. This is the most, the, the most productive time up and ever since the cross. The period like, like starting about here, in each of these segments here. This was the most productive period of learning and living on Bible the manuscripts and all kinds of stuff like that and that's one reason it led to World War One so here's our World War One so what is it gonna have to be when the distance is a hundred and five syllables between that one and this one just like the distance was a hundred and five syllables between this one which uses the same text as for our time and this one what you should be concluding is that, oh, let's pay close attention to what was said here because parallelism is being made not only with respect to the words,
but with respect to the distance. So we are in a parallel time to what's showing on screen right now. And all that is told to you because of the word order, the syllable counts, alert you to it. I was alerted as soon as, as soon as I did the syllable counts. If they weren't divisible by seven, you could say, well, maybe it's something similar, but it's not intended for you to pay attention to the previous. Okay, but if the syllable counts are always divisible by seven, somebody's doing it on purpose. And so now, what is this about? Don't be deceived. What was this about? Temple down. On top of that, we got Amen Lego Huming, which has its own track. It's always divisible by three, and on one occasion, also divisible by seven. So, Amen Lego Huming, this is the second occurrence. This is the Crusades. First time was Temple Down. That was an obvious war. Crusades, this is actually the second crusade. Obvious war. Okay? And it's saying that the generation who sees that Second Crusade will see all this stuff that he warned about happen. Yeah, see, because here's the here's the 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 fig tree that's Israel being taken over, overrun in 1071 A.D. at the very place. This is the 1071st syllable. Okay, I'm mean, well 1071st year because you have to add 30. All right, and it's 1080 A.D. by the end. You got 1036, by the time you get here, alright, see that stands for 1066 AD, Norman invasion. By the time you get here, that's the takedown of Jerusalem, and fig tree is the symbol of Israel. Well, that was large, it was public, it was nasty, it was bloody, and it was long. That's Amen Lego Humin being referred to here. Okay? And it's saying the generation where that happens is going to see it all. Okay, so now we add up those two, and then we get down to the third one, which is the most dramatic of all in its own way, the only nice one. This is a compliment to the English for the English Reformation. Who's the loyal servant? Well, it starts right here. Who's the loyal servant who's going to make sure everybody eats in time? Okay, the master, the Lord, will put that servant in charge of everything he's got. And it starts, the, the benchmark. See, here's the content. I'm in little, believe it when I tell you. Yeah, and Elizabeth I was believing it because she's the one who started it. And she's the only one in Europe that, that took that route. Okay, yeah, her dad started the, the Anglican Church and all that, but that's she really is the one who started the English Reformation. She managed to curry enough loyalty despite all the stuff that was going on to direct everybody, let's just agree on Bible and God and you be your religion and I'll be my religion else and you know yeah I'm the head of the Anglican Church because my dad made one but I'm not going to enforce you if you want to be Catholic to not be Catholic. You see that's the point. That was what was different about her reign versus her father and versus the people who, who were going on in Europe. And this is where America got started because of this. Major, major thing. And I've talked to you before about how each of these curious references is for the reformers. This is for the King James Bible itself in its first three editions. And this is Jan Huss. And this was Wingley and, and Erasmus and Luther. Or was that here? No, and this is John Knox, without which there wouldn't have been an English Reformation. Because King James was doing his thing here. And this was the beginning of the satire. This was Charles I, son of James I. And Charles wanted to go back to telling you how to read your Bible. And the English said, no. So by the end of this word, curios, the real Lord is the Lord in England, and Charles is deposed. Now, you're not supposed to revolt. But if that's the kind of quid pro quo you're given by your own king, then the king has to go. Alright, it's that simple.
where we're entering the same kind of phase with Trump, which is why this switch to the more intimate Nufias going back to, back to Kurios is so scathing. In other words, these people don't want a husband. The foolish virgins, the remaining ones, are coming back after the door is closed. They don't want a husband. They want somebody that they can pride themselves on calling him Lord, but actually they want to be their own Lord. And I don't know, if you, unless you've been on a rock somewhere during the last 15, 18 months, everybody and his brother supporting Trump is calling him Lord. I mean, just, just search on Trump Anointed in YouTube or Google, and you'll see these people. Or go to rightwatch.org, who, who's actually cataloging how many so-called Christian leaders are praising Donald Trump as if he were the Lord. Now, you know, long before that happened, nobody would have guessed it. No group of Christians have ever done this before. No group anywhere. Not even prior in history. This is the first time Christians are trying to call a human being Lord. In Trump we trust by Ann Coulter. Go look it up in Amazon. Nobody ever. Okay, since Christianity got started. Nobody ever did this. This is how bad Christians are in the United States now. And in my 42nd video, I explain, you know what? Here's how you know. That just as they're going away to buy something, the real bridegroom, Christ, comes. And he comes loudly. Yeah, it's pretty loud when you're discovering yet another manuscript to St. Catherine's Monastery. This is when King James Onlyism is in full swing down in Florida with the recently deceased Peter Ruckman, who I found out oh, a couple of years ago had a real fixation for my pastor, was always trying to compete with him. I didn't know that. I never heard about it from my pastor, who was in his heyday right here. This is 1976. And that was when Jerry Falwell got started. And was saying, oh, you know, there's this thing called abortion and it's murder. Bible never said that. 3,300 years of Christian and Judaic law never said that. Roman Catholic Church never said that. Not even the Roman Catholic Church. But, oh, this guy wants political power, so he's going to now criminalize a fetus that's aborted. Even though the Bible flat tells you abortion isn't murder. And I did the videos on that in the Pro-Life Blasphemy series. So is it surprising that since they're reversing the Bible here, and since they're claiming to bring Christ back, Seven Mountains, which is the reverse of Revelation 17. Just look up Seven Mountains in YouTube. Just type it in. Seven Mountains. Ted Cruz's dad, Rafael Cruz, is one of the chief spokespersons for Seven Mountains. Lance Wallnau, who claims to have the ear of Donald Trump, is one of the chief spokespersons of it. James Dobson is one of the chief spokespersons of it. I mean, this is really bad. And these people think they're going to bring Christ back. That's why they're saying, open to us. See, we put Donald Trump on the throne. Now you got to open to us because our seven mountains are now achieved. You see how serious this is? Now we, co we apply our parallelism from before. Whoa, we got the same language as was used for Temple Down. And we got yet our fourth, Amen Lego Humin, and it's not nice. Its content is Uk Oida Humas. I don't know you. Now, this isn't God's omniscience question. This is a Roman practice of repudiation. He, Christ is talking to people who are well versed in Greek mythology, Greek culture, Roman mythology, and Roman law. And when a Roman girl went out with the wrong boy and then comes sneaking back to her dad knocks on the door for the servant to come in the father comes to the door and he won't let her in he says I don't know you that's a disavowal that's disowning her 
Christ is going to disown. Sorry if I'm yelling. He's going to disown all these pro-lifers who've been loud and busy during this time. And those of us who got shut up in the door behind him in 1998 will be left. So this is one big, bad, massive period of judgment coming. I don't know if it's a civil war, because the takedown of the temple was a civil war amongst the Jews. The takedown, the second occurrence of Apocrites, was related to Commodus, and that, that too was taking place amidst the civil war that actually his dad didn't cause, that was between the pagans and the Christians. Alright, the third time is World War One, and that's a civ that's basically a, you know, a civil war of humanity, and it started by Christians against other Christians. So it's that kind of a civil war. In the outgrowth of the prior civil wars that com countries were in, because one group wanted to take away the stuff of another group, give us what you got. No. Answer, World War One. Then answer. World War Two. Go buy your own. And while they are leaving, while they are in the process of leaving, in other words, think of stage left and stage right. The 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 virgins, the foolish ones, are exiting stage left, and the nymphias is coming in on stage right. So how come they don't hear them? Okay? Well, they don't hear them because they're going after a political lord. So what has to be the answer? First of all, this is going to have to be some kind of nasty period. This is going to be nasty. We're already starting to see it in the first week of Trump's presidency. It's like he's trying to cause World War III. He's trying to cause the civil war within the administration. He's trying to alienate everybody. The federal employees, our neighbors, our allies, he's going out of his way, just like when he was five and six years old and had to be sent to military school. He goes out of his way to be a nasty jackass. Because that's all he knows. That's how he gets his attention. By being bad. He likes to be bad. He likes to fight. Yeah, but now he's fighting with the whole world and he's taking us with him? I don't think so. So something really nasty is going to happen in here before 2023 ends. I don't know if Trump's going to live out the year, to be honest. Sooner or later, his own voters are going to be alienated. And that's when the whole denouement of the GOP will occur. It's dead now. They just don't know it yet. All right. But that's not the end of it because there's 62 million people who voted for this guy. So now they vote. Their vote, human vote, ends here, 2023, and then the Lord votes, just like he did before, explaining. Okay, well, the explanation is, hey, I don't know you. I don't know you stupid Christians who tried to angle for political power, and now you think because you got your Lord installed that I'm supposed to, oh, be impressed and behold it. No, I disown you. I don't know you. Now, how much military, actual, overt, civil war is going to have to happen? At least starting in, you know, at a time to his 2000th anniversary of his death. How much is that? I don't know. What I do know is that he's setting up the parallel to the temple. Alright? Because the same words are used. Number one. Number two, I'm in Lego Humi, and that's always something public and nasty. Or not necessarily nasty, but public and turbulent. Because even the Reformation, which was a compliment to Elizabeth, Okay, remember? This is complimentary. But people were killing each other. 
over this. It was a kind of civil war. All right, is that what we're looking at again here? Is that what's going to happen here? Could be. How much how much bloodshed is there going to be versus just arguing? I don't know. Is that arguing or bloodshed going to be restricted to within the United States? I don't know. Is it going to be secession by those who are so angry they disagree, they, they don't even want to be part of the U.S. anymore, therefore playing exactly the opposite, exactly the opposite of this civil war here? Could be just the opposite. It could be that because of what's happening here to create the federal dominance gets undone here. That would actually be to the benefit of freedom. It's federal dominance that's caused this problem. And we can sit here all day and say all the Democrats are to blame. Well, honey, at this point, everybody's to blame. Let's not work on that. Let's, let's see, okay, what do we do to fix this? There's only one thing you can do, all right? That's why this prophecy is even here. Learn and live on Bible under your right teacher using 1 John 1 9 is needed and talk to God about what you're learning. That is how to stop or reduce however bad this is going to be. All I can say is that based on the evidence here, it's bad. Now if you got another interpretation, I'd love to hear it. I think this is going to close this subsection. The next section that I'm going to start posting videos on. It's going to be about Mark 13 plays to the first thousand years here. Only he has an interesting take on it. Remember Luke had done to 1085? What Mark does is he, he, he sort of like marbleizes, you know, like marbling in meat. He marbleizes the Matthew text and the Luke text. And then he adds the same number of syllables as are in Daniel 9, 24 through 27 to it. So that's preview of coming attractions. If you got any questions, they've got too many videos to look at, either look at those or just ask me and I'll try to point you out and save you time, okay? Peace out.